ब्रेक्सिट यूएस चाइना ट्रेड वॉर रीजन्स फॉर हाई अनएम्प्लॉयमेंट इन इंडिया एंड दैट्स जस्ट टू पेजेस ऑफ टूडेज न्यूज पेपर डू यू रियली वॉन्ट बी डू दिस टू बी डूइंग दिस एक्टिंग एक्सरसाइज ऑन अ डेली बेसिस आई एम श्योर नॉट लेट्स क्रिएट अ मोर ऑर्गेनाइज एंड मोर सक्सेसफुल स्ट्रैटेजी फॉर इंग्लिश फॉर आर बी एग्जामिनेशन ट्वेंटी नाइनटीन हाई गाइज माई नेम इज अनु चिंदल एंड टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू एनालाइज ट्वेंटी एटीन इंग्लिश पेपर एंड एट द सेम टाइम क्रिएट अ मोर सक्सेसफुल मोर ऑर्गेनाइज एंड अ बेटर स्ट्रैटेजी फॉर ट्वेंटी नाइनटीन इंग्लिश एग्जामिनेशन सो दैट वी कैन कम आउट ऑफ दिस ब्लैक होल एंड अचीव बेटर मार्क्स इन इंग्लिश सो एज यू कैन सी दिस इज दी ट्वेंटी एटीन इंग्लिश फेज टू एग्जामिनेशन पास्ट ईयर पेपर एंड वॉट आई एम गोइंग टू डू इज फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल आई एम गोइंग टू बी एनालाइजिंग द एंटायर पेपर फॉर यू सो वील बी डिस्कसिंग ऑल दी फोर एसेज वील बी डिस्कसिंग दी प्रेसी स्ट्रैटेजी इन ब्रीफ एंड देन वील बी टॉकिंग अबाउट रीडिंग कॉम्प्रीहेंशन एंड देन वी विल डिवाइड और वी विल क्रिएट अ स्ट्रैटेजी फॉर ऑल थ्री पेपर्स वन बाय वन नाउ दिस स्ट्रैटेजी दैट आई एम गोइंग टू क्रिएट फॉर यू इज गोइंग टू बी बेस्ड ऑन दी सक्सेसफुल कैंडिडेट्स ऑफ ट्वेंटी एटीन whatever experiences i have had with these candidates uh, has helped me understand better as to what kind of strategy can be more successful can be less vulnerable and have higher probability of getting good marks with this particular strategy it might work it might not but the probability of it working us certainly more than going into the black hole without any strategy at all so as you can see here I have with me RBA 2018 English Phase Two paper. I have uh, first of all listed down all the essays which were asked in the examination. Total of five essays were asked. You had to write on any one of these. The word limit was uh, 300 words. Uh, very comfortable, uncomfortable for some people because it's too less, especially for UPSC candidates. The total marks allocation was uh, 40 marks. And what are these? Uh, what were the five? uh options what were the five essay topics that we had number 1 upi advantages of upi over money transfer number 2 financial inclusion a requirement for all ages in india these are the keywords here number 3 crowdfunding the new phenomena in financing number 4 positive and negative effects of demonetization on indian economy and number 5 measures for promoting microfinance in india so what we have to do first of all before writing any essay is to highlight the keywords that are mentioned in every essay so that we understand and we find out what is it that we are going to write upon okay so what we are going to do is first of all we will discuss all these five essays one by one we will be going through all the dimensions that can be covered then when, then uh, after that we will be going through uh, the pressy and rc very briefly because i don't have the actual excerpt and at the end i will be creating a strategy for all three areas for you guys so that it becomes more organized so let me start with upi the advant the question was or the essay topic was advantages of upi over money transfer now these are the dimensions that i have created in a very short period of time of course there can be a lot of other dimensions as well and those dimensions can be even better depends upon dimension to dimension but these are the major dimensions that you could have covered if you were writing this examination or writing this essay so what are the <coughs> keywords here number 1 advantages number 2 upi and number 3 money transfer so these are the three major keywords that we have to keep in mind advantages of upi over money transfer now these two keywords are connected with each other because whatever advantage of upi we are going to give we have to show or we have to prove how is it better than money transfer the first one was cost the first one the or let's me write it as a the first advantage of upi over money transfer is that the cost is lesser Uh, in comparison with money transfer it is as low as 50 paisa by money transfer we mean methods like mneft like rtgs like imps and many other methods the second advantage going into another dimension is that it is too easy or very easy to use compared to uh, other channels of money transfer for example nneft it takes Uh, sometimes a day sometimes 30 minutes to register someone 
That does not happen in UPI. UPI can be used as easy as cash. So why is cash so popular, uh, you know, around the world? Because of its ease of use, because it is so easy to use, you can just take out cash from a wallet and give it to anyone. Well, UPI is as simple as that. Or, uh, or uh, in, in, theor in theory, it, it, it is desired to be as easy as cash so that it can replace cash. That is how it becomes advantageous or it becomes a better method of money transfer than other methods of money transfer like NFT, RTGS and many others out there. Or uh, for that matter, even e-wallets because e-wallets cannot actually connect with your bank account the way UPI can. So in UPI, you can directly transfer money from your bank account. But in e-wallets, you have to first transfer your money from bank account to the e-wallet and then from e-wallet to any other person. But that does not happen when it comes to UPI. The third advantage is comfort. It is 24-7. You would say IMPS is also 24-7. But registration is required in IMPS, but we don't need any registration because we are not using the account number of any person. In fact, we are using a virtual payment number, which is like an email ID and therefore it's more comfortable. The fourth one is or D here is security. Bank details not required, therefore no stress because a lot of people don't uh, uh, want to reveal their identity when they're dealing with a laptop, a computer a phone and things like that because they fear that uh, things might get hacked. In fact, there's a story behind this. When I was working in SBI, a lot of educated people, educated and young people used to come to the branch and I would ask them, why are you coming here? You're not supposed to be coming here. You're supposed to be using everything online. Please use internet banking. Please use e-wallets. Please use mobile banking. And they would say all these educated, young educated people of our age, they would say, that sir, uh, we fear that it might get hacked. We don't want to get into something like that. So it's better to spend the, our Saturdays uh, in the bank rather than spending, you know, or rather than getting rid of our money for no fault of us. So that is the security threat that's there with other money transfer mechanisms, but that's not the same with UPI. It's one app for multiple accounts. So you can access and you can connect all your accounts via this one app that makes it much more easier. The next one is or the sixth one is lenders. It also provides or has recently started providing money collection facility. That's an amazing feature. So what you can do is let's say uh, I have taken a loan from you and tomorrow you want to get that loan back uh, from me uh, and uh, I'm not responding. So what you do is you send a notification to me over UPI and that notification comes to my app, my UPI app, and I would get to know, okay, this guy is demanding money again and again. So if you keep doing it, you're basically pestering me and I have to return your money. Or let's say I forget about it. Or let's say I'm out of reach. I'm in another country or something like that. Anything might be the reason, the facility to send a notification to your friend, to your, uh, 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 to the person who has taken loan from you, uh, you can collect money from them. And the last one advantage that I have uh, mentioned here is it's better than digital um, wallet because money stays in the bank. So money doesn't go out of the bank. So as I had said, in e-wallet, what happens is there is a bank, you transfer money from that bank to your e-wallet and from one e-wallet, this is number one, to the other e-wallet, wherever you want to send that money. But the same does not happen when it comes to UPI. So in case of UPI, this is the bank. The bank is connected with UPI. So both of them are connected now. It's a circle created. You don't have to transfer money from bank to the UPI. And simultaneously, you can transfer money from UPI to any other bank, any other UPI or any kind of e-wallet. So what that does is because your bank money is parked in the bank itself, you get interest on it. But that does not happen here because as soon as money goes into your e-wallet, you stop getting interest on your, in your e-wallet. So these are the major advantages of UPI over money transfer. And as you can see here, I'm covering multiple dimensions here. So first dimension was cost, second dimension was, was ease, third was comfort, fourth was security, fifth was one app for multiple accounts, sixth was lenders, and seventh was comparison with direct comparison with a digital wallet with respect to interest that you're making on this, 
or not making on an e-wallet. So these are the major dimensions that I mentioned here. Now what I'm going to tell you, what I'm trying to tell you here is that you have to be multi-dimensional in your approach. Now it's easier said than done because it's not that easy to develop that kind of, uh, you know, uh, an outlook towards anything that comes across. You have to think about everything that comes in front of you through multiple dimensions or in multiple dimensions. Let's say geographical, let's say historical, let's say political, let's say social. In economic, there are a lot of dimensions. There is the international economic dimension, there is the domestic economic dimension, then there is the age or demographic dimension. So there are a lot of dimensions that you can cover. And here also I have covered different run, uh, dimensions. There is cost, money. There is interest, money. There is a uh, lender, uh, if you're loaning money to someone else. There is security, of course, very important aspect, tech. There is comfort and ease, uh, uh, as easy as cash, comparison with cash. There is one app for multiple accounts, again, ease, again, uh, flexibility of UPI. So these are different dimensions that I have provided here. You have to, you have to, without any doubt, develop your skill of thinking about everything from multiple dimensions. How can you do that? We'll be talking about it after we have discussed all the five essays. The second essay that we have is financial inclusion, a requirement for all ages in India. Now the uh, assumption or the conclusion or the inference of ages might differ. But what I have done here is I infer ages as a demography in India. So whether you're a kid, whether you're an adult, whether you are an old person, whether you're a, uh, you're a female or whether you're a male or you're from a rural, uh, sitting in a rural area, sitting in an urban area. So what are the advantages or importances of financial inclusion for all ages in India? That's what I have tried to provide here. The first mandatoriness of financial inclusion for kids or advantage of financial inclusion for kids is that they have better financial knowledge if they are more financially included and they learn how to save. So uh, the best example here is people or students who are given monthly pocket money are better at financial savings and are better at their capability to spend money than students or than kids who are not given any kind of pocket money and even just borrow from their parents whenever they would need any money. So what this does, the idea of providing uh, a, a regular set of income to your kids is uh, developing their ability to save or to spend money in a more organized manner. The same goes with financial inclusion. If they're included financially, uh, they have a bank account, so they can go and take out money from there. They can you know, borrow money from, uh, they, can, they can lend money to someone, or they can involve in peer-to-peer -peer lending, or they can you know, invest in the financial markets at a very small scale, let's say 100 rupees per month, 200 rupees per month. If they do that, they're more uh, aware and they're more learned about how to save, how to invest money. So that's the first advantage. The second advantage is for households. When you are more financially included, when the ladies or the housewives of the household, or let's say house husbands of the households are more financially included, then they, they try to avoid uh, investing in gold because now they realize that uh, you know uh, going to the financial markets, investing in other arenas, taking a, uh, an insurance, those are more beneficial for us rather than blindly investing in gold and, and uh, using cash as savings. So they go and invest or they go and deposit money into the bank account because they know that they're getting certain, certain returns also from these bank accounts. And at the same time, there is better accounting because now, now they know uh, how is the money being saved, how is the money being invested, how is the money being spent, uh, what amount of money is being consumed. So when you're financially included, when all your transactions are being recorded automatically, you are better at financial savings, you're better at organizing your finances. The third one is old people and the direct advantage is pension. When you're old, uh, uh, when you're you know, trying to get your pension on a regular basis. If you have pension, uh, if you're financially included, you're much more secure. The fifth one is youth access to financial markets. This applies to all of us, you and me, because we know that mutual funds are uh, have financial have uh, you know financial risks, but at the same time they are a better investment strategy than just putting your money into gold or putting your money 
you know in an ideal cash situation so we access the financial markets and try to organize our savings organize our earnings into a better manner so that's the advantage of financial inclusion for the youth then you have insurance more security for emergencies absorbing shocks so if you're financially included that means you have insurance uh, one aspect of financial uh, inclusion is insurance and when you have insurance then you are more secure against uh, uh, various kinds of health and other shocks and then the advantage of uh, financial inclusion to the bpl to the poor people so they get to get direct money from so that's that's a direct advantage to them because they don't have to stand in big lines and uh, you know get their ration or get all those things uh, sorted out they don't have to spend one entire day on getting that money they get directly the money can come into their bank accounts they can withdraw it from an atm uh, so on and so forth so these are the major advantages for all ages uh, in uh, with respect to financial inclusion so what i've done is i am trying to give as many dimensions as possible i'm trying to think in multiple dimensions whether it's poor whether it's rich whether it's adult whether it's male whether it's female whether it's kid whether it's household whether it's old all kinds of dimensions are being covered because the keyword here is ages so you have to keep that in mind okay let's uh, jump to the third one because we have to uh, create a strategy as well so the third one is crowd funding the new phenomena in financing now among these five topics of course there will be some topics which you would not want to get into this is probably one of them because we don't have a lot of you know uh, options here a lot of choices here a lot of points here multi dimensionality is a little different or i found it a little difficult for myself so the question is crowd funding the new phenomena new phenomena in financing so these are the keywords crowd funding what is crowd funding it's a new phenomena and we're talking about financing here how do we raise money using crowd funding uh, to get new products and ideas to the market so crowd funding is being used by a lot of startups and uh, companies which are just idea based companies so let's say i have a company i registered a company but the company doesn't do anything i just have an idea and uh, the idea is such that it requires huge investment and i don't want to go to a big investor and ask for money i don't have that much of let's say confidence i do, i just don't want to do that so i have the option of getting into the activity of crowdfunding how do i do that i just go online or offline to these various crowdfunding events or crowdfunding uh, uh, websites and i say that hey this is my idea i want to pitch it forward i want to convert it into a reality and uh, i have a new product and you can help me get it to the market so crowdfunding becomes a new phenomenon of financing here rather than going to the bank rather than going to an investor rather than going to the uh, you know financial markets for raising money in terms of debt or equity i can go to another kind of market which is crowdfunding market the next one is equity crowdfunding equity crowdfunding is basically uh, i go to the website uh, crowdfunding website or i go to a uh, event which is offline and i say hey this is my idea this is my product everything is out there i want to raise money through crowd crowdfunding and for every 100 rupees you spend you get 0.00001% of my company and everybody says not a bad idea i'll invest 1000 bucks doesn't matter 1000 bucks uh, is not a large sum of money so they're easy and it's so it's easy for them to invest it's easy for you to collect money and uh, uh, you don't have to give a big stake out of your equity as well so that's called as equity crowdfunding no need to wait for a bank to approve your financial needs so you can go directly to the crowdfunding website you can go directly to these events and you can raise money through crowdfunding so the time required is much less uh, the uh, various kinds of uh, paperwork which is required when you are raising money from bank that is not required here so it saves a lot of time and energy of you faster way to raise money online from thousands of small investors certainly faster when you are asking for 1000 rupees or 100 rupees from people they don't shy away from investing that much because they you know just spend that much in doing small things on a day to day basis so it's not a big investment they don't fear that they'll be losing a lot of money the risk is less and at the same time you get a lot of money in a small time period and the fifth advantage or uh, method that crowdfunding is a new phenomena is that you get to fund funding through donations so crowdfunding can be through investment and at the same time crowdfunding can also be through donations so a very good example here is uh, something that happened probably 4 5 years back in manipur 
there was an IS officer, uh, a bureaucrat who was not able to, uh, you know, get the clearances to get a road made, which was very important for the local people there. So he went to Facebook, he went online, created a page, a group, something of that sort, and he demanded or he asked for donations in order to create, in order to help him create that small road that was required for the villagers. A lot of people came forward, he got donations worth 5 lakh and through that crowdfunding, he got the road made. Uh, so those are the ways, uh, different ways through which crowdfunding is a better method or let's say another method of, uh, you know, uh, raising money through the uh, raising uh, money online or offline. And the next one that we have is positive and negative effects of demonetization in India. So these are the keywords here. You have demonetization, you have positive. Let's say this is the second one and then you have the negative. So you have all these three. And of course, because demonetization was an Indian phenomena, so you have Indian hair, not a very important keyword because we are anyways not going to go global. So what were the positive and negative effects? You mentioned positive first or you mentioned negative first, does not matter. Uh, let me go th take you through all the dimensions to help you understand how different dimensions can be created. So th the entire purpose of this particular exercise of taking you through all the uh, topics is that you understand, okay, these are the dimensions that can be created. Okay. The first one is hit the economic growth by reducing supply of money, hence demand for goods went down. So the first option that we has is, have is economic growth. So the impact on economic growth was the first one that we have here. Okay, impact on economic growth, number one. Number two, agriculture sector affected. The second one is agriculture sector got affected because of low cash availability. Number three, these are self-explanatory, so I'm not taking too long. The third one is SMEs and daily wage laborers were affected. So the first one, the entire economy. Second one, going into sectors, agriculture, SME, household savings, digital payments got a boost, advantage. So these were the negatives, then you have the advantage, higher income tax collections, advantage, counterfeit currency, black money and corruption according to the government, of course there are counter arguments, but this is one of the advantages that is being claimed, high deposits for banks, the advantage for banks, a very good dimension which is often missed out or ignored or forgotten by students. Okay, so these are the major dimensions. Of course, there are n number of dimensions here, a lot of dimensions that you can present, but we have limited space we have only 300 words and therefore we have to ensure that we are able to cover as many dimensions as possible provide them dimensions which are more important from rbi's point of view because you're giving an rbi exam you're not giving upsc exam so focusing a lot on social sectors is not going to help you we have focused on digital payments we have focused on income tax we are focused on counterfeit currency, we are focused on high deposits for banks. These are all areas connected with RBI and important for RBI. And that is how you get more marks. Okay. And the last one is measures for promoting microfinance in India. Mind it, it's microfinance, it's not microfinance institutions. A lot of students got it wrong actually this year. They wrote on microfinance institutions. We are talking about microfinance. So we are talking, what we are talking about or what the examiner expects from you is small finance. How do you promote small finance in India? Banking correspondence, one of the most important ones. Digitalization of Indian financial system, one of the most important ones, small finance. MFIs, microfinance institutions to promote microfinance, okay? So that's how you connect it. MFIs, associating them with big banks to enable access of money. So what you're doing is along with microfinance, you're also telling them, okay, microfinance institutions, very important, but microfinance institutions lack money. So we give them money by accessing, giving them access to financial markets by associating them with big banks. And another one, making them a part of interest subvention under agricultural loans so that they have more money. And at the same time, agricultural loans, which are basically microfinance loans are able to increase. And right mix of universal banks and niche banks can also promote microfinancing in India. So these are the very basic dimensions that I could create for microfinance. Of course, it was not very comprehensive. And therefore, what I would do is on a personal note, if I'm going and taking the exam, okay, I see the arguments here are not very strong. The arguments here are decent enough, but a lot of people must have written on demonetization, very popular one. Crowdfunding, the arguments are strong. And at the same time, not a lot of people must have written about it. I would consider it. Financial inclusion, requirement for all ages, good one. I have created a lot of dimensions, total of six dimensions. Uh, a lot, not a lot of people would be writing about it as well. 
compared to the first one the first one is i think most uh, one of the most uh, popular ones so the first one and the fourth one are the most popular ones but at the same time i have created seven dimensions and all these seven dimensions are very strong i am very sure about them so upi demonetization financial inclusion all three i am very strong about it crowdfunding probably i'll try and stay away because the dimensions are not as multi dimensional as i would want them to be so okay i have listed that down to 3 from 5 to 3 i filtered it demonetization upi and the last one which was financial inclusion now i pick any one from them whatever i feel i can be more expressive i can be more confident so i pick that one and start writing on that so that's how you you know create the right mix of sa for you so that is what needs to be done now we'll be explaining i'll be explaining and i'll be talking about the strategy as well let's go through the pressy okay the pressy was on environmental pollution china's impact and the impact on as well as by other developing countries 150 words 30 marks as important as the sa and the last one is reading comprehension i think this is the most important and the easiest way to score marks out here because uh, you know 30 marks five questions you just have to copy it right from the uh, uh, you know reading comprehension you don't have to create anything out there okay so let's create a strategy for all three one by one so that uh, we are uh, at a better place than we are right now okay so i have created this for you guys okay so we have let's say uh, sa in between because that is something that we consider to be more most important we have rc here and we have the pressy here okay so in sa what are the key points that you have to remember number 1 multi dimensional that is something that cannot be missed out number 2 very important you are writing rbi exam you are not writing upsc you are not writing uh, any other bank exam you are writing rbi exam so everything has to be from rbi and banking plus economy perspective okay so you have to keep that in mind you cannot forget it you have to keep it in mind okay so because you are writing rbi exam rbi and banking plus economy perspective is the most important one here so sa we've got two major points multi dimensional rbi exam then you create a structure either on paper or in your mind before starting with the sa so you create a structure you list down the positives and negatives it if asked you list down the dimensions if asked and after having created a structure then you start with it the fourth one is uh you need to write an intro and the best way to pull off an intro is to write the importance so let's say upi you write the importance demonetization the purpose or objective of demonetization okay or uh, financial inclusion the objective of financial inclusion or you give an example you give an example to explain let's say an international example of how, how financial inclusion transforms the lives of people okay uh, and then you have the body which is going to be multi dimensional let me say md in nature and then you have the conclusion where you either give a future uh, as to the way forward or you just conclude by saying that okay this was very important and uh, so uh, we know that multi uh, you know financial inclusion has we've uh, uh, clearly proved that financial inclusion is very advantageous for all ages in india and how uh, rbi can be connected with or how rbi can benefit or how rbi is involved in this particular strategy okay so rbi's connection rbi's involvement all these things can be written in the conclusion so these are the major points that you need to keep in mind while you're writing an essay now let's come to pressy so pressy the most important thing that you have to keep in mind is to write in your own words write in your own words there is no other way to pull off a pressy if you're not writing in your own words you're not going to be able to pull it off okay so you have to write it in your own words what this means at the same time is that uh, let's say pressy is talking about uh, let's say sita raman uh, had a press conference and uh, she talked about press conference and she talked about uh, let's say rafal and she defended the government stake on it and then the supreme court came out with certain ruling or with certain directions and uh, now the opposition is 
creating a ruckus or mess out of it. So this is the structure that's given in the presses. You have to break it down. You have to write it in shorter terms. You don't need to talk about Sitaram and you don't need to talk about opposition. You just have to talk about this, the most important part. What is Rafale deal? What, are the, what, is, what is wrong with the, what is the controversy around Rafale, Rafale deal? And what does the Supreme Court have to say about it? So those are the important things. So you can restructure the presi. You can restructure the presi, talk about the most important points and you have to mention all these important points in your own words. You cannot expect or you don't want to be, you know, not messing around with the structure. You have to change it according to your own needs, according to what you think is important. So these are two major things that you have to keep in mind while you're writing a presi. And for RC, the most important thing is stick to the comprehension, stick to the RC. Do not include your own knowledge do not assume things that are not mentioned in the rc stick to the rc probably use synonyms probably use synonyms in place of using the same sentences or the same words so that it looks a little different but you have to when it comes to structure and identity of an answer you have to stick to the rc okay so these are the major points when it comes to uh, strategy on uh, phase two essay rc and pressy I hope you like this particular session. The idea was to discuss past year paper of 2018 and at the same time create a more organized and a more strategic strategy which can be used and uh, which can be relied upon. Um, and one last thing I have to say is when you're talking about essay, create, do not forget, create a list, create a list of about, about, uh, 40 to 50 topics that you expect are going to be asked. That's what we did last year and uh, it happens every year. We create a list and at the end, well, because we're well prepared with that entire list of 40 to 50 essays, 40 to 50 topics, uh, two or three topics strike and we're able to write better answers. So that's what you're going to be doing because the purpose is to clearly clear the exam, crack the exam. You don't need just knowledge. You need a smart way to go through the examination. Okay, so that was uh, me, Anuj. Uh, I hope you liked this particular session. If you did, subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss out on the future videos. And there's a bell icon right at the side of subscribe button that ensures that whenever I release a new video, you get notification regarding the same and you can go and watch it on YouTube immediately. All the very best for the examination. Take care. See you soon.